So let's talk about working with the skin tone selection function of SKN. Now it does amplify, if you will, what Photoshop already does by using chroma data and some other sort of visualization techniques. And it really helps Photoshop find skin tones, but on occasion they're not quite accurate right out of the box and sometimes they get really lost. Because of that, we've made some different modifications to SKN 1.1 to give you some flexibility on how you want to go about selecting. And it's not just for, you know, skin tone selections that don't work out right. It's also preference how you like to work. Let's go ahead and run cleanup real quick on this boudoir image. Okay, so that's done. Let's take a look at the mask. I'm going to go ahead and uh, alt or option click the mask. And you can see that we have a mask. Now, it's not perfect. It just, it just isn't. Okay. Now, while you're reviewing your mask, by the way, we have a nice button down here too that we've added to the bottom of the panel. And you can just tap that and view your mask anytime you want, any old time. We'll talk about the other buttons in just one minute. But let's talk about the initial selection. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and delete that stack because we can come over here and right click the little selection button on the bottom left. We tap that and we get some choices. Now, this fuzziness has to do with um, Photoshop skin tone selection, but again, we're sending it chroma data. So it, it can see through the shadows a lot better than normal Photoshop skin tone selection. So because of the deep shadows on this boudoir image, I'm going to choose very loose and then I'm going to go back. Let's go ahead and run it again. See if the mask is a little bit better. Okay. So let's take a look at our mask. Okay. It is a little bit better, but of course those deep shadows are getting lost. Now this is probably still very useful. Don't get me wrong, but because it's a boudoir image, I want to show you yet another option. Let's go back to our selection options by right clicking the select skin button. And this time we're going to choose subject only. All right, let's run that and see what we get. As an aside, I am actually speeding up the video on the process because it takes a few seconds. It can take between five seconds and 30 seconds, depending on your image and if it's 16 bit or not resolution, etc. But it gets everything set up in advance. Let's take a look at our mask. Here we go. As you can see, we have a nice clean subject mask. Now, of course, we have the hair involved, but we do have a better mask. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, let's take a look. See, when you start with an entire subject mask, on a boudoir image or an art nude or something like that, you're already 90, 95% of the way there. So what you can do is on this mask, while you're preparing your mask for final use, let's say right now the mask is, I'm gonna select it right now, you can't really see the mask, but I'm gonna go ahead and mask out with black, mask out the outfit here, and then very quickly mask out the hair because I don't want that involved. See how fast that is real quick? There we go go done and done and the other little details on the rest of the outfit those black straps are probably not important but that's all right this is a very common process that i do and then now we view our mask okay we can refine it further while we're viewing it if we want pretty normal masking stuff if you are new to masking this might seem a little abstract but this is pretty common stuff okay and now we have a nice clean mask or at least a good start because when you have a boudoir image or an art nude or something like that or a glamour image generally speaking it's almost all skin so a subject selection might be the better way to go for you as opposed to you know trying to find just a skin tone now if you have a nice clear shot and there's not deep shadows like this then the default settings will probably nail the skin perfectly in terms of creating a selection. That's what SKN sort of hallmark is. But when you have a challenging shot like this, you have to remember everything you do with skin editing in an automated way with SKN or, or even any other panel, to be honest, it's all about, it's as good as your mask is, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So if you have a great mask, everything will happen better. Now we still have another option for you. And by option, I mean, it's just more of a preference, right? So if I right click, the play button. Okay. Now we have another option here. That's new black mask. Okay. You can turn that on and now let's go ahead and run it yet again. All right. So what do we have here? Well, if we look at our mask, we realize one doesn't exist and the cleanup effect, you can't see it. So again, if you know about masking, it's pretty clear that you can come here with a, a white foreground color on a paintbrush and you can paint in exactly where you want it to be. And that's cool. Very, very convenient in and of itself. But we can go to another level of convenience, especially on, like I said, boudoir, art, nude, and glamour images. So if we come back here to our little selection option. Remember, we just left it. I'm going to right click it. We just left it on subject selection, right? Only. So we tap it. And it's going to quickly try to select a subject with Photoshop's function. There it is. And now with that running, while I'm on the mask, if I paint with white, 
I can quickly paint over areas that I need while still having the perimeter of the subject protected. So I can paint a little, a little sloppier, if you will, a little faster while managing to avoid wardrobe. Now, again, in general, you may not want to do this if, you know, if most of your subject is skin, just let the subject selection do its thing. But if you do want to paint it in, that's just another quick tip. You don't have to run subject selection. You just paint in where you want. So again, that's just another preference depending on how you like to work. And again, you can reach that with right clicking the play button and turn black mask on or off. And of course, if you right click your little select button, then you have choices there, the subject selection uh, only or the amount of fuzziness that we have with our chroma skin tone selection. So these are just small little updates and uh, suggestions for you when it comes to SKN 1.1. Oh, and if you change your mind sort of midway, there's a couple of things you can do. One, you can see what's going on with your image with this bottom X button. You tap that and your mask is hidden. OK, so you can just kind of see what it looks like across the entire image to see what's being affected negatively or positively if you want. OK, you can just kind of turn that off. And second, you can push this button on the right to erase the mask. And now you have a black mask you can mask in manually. That's usually the best way to go if the mask creation isn't great. And you're like, ah, it's close, but it doesn't quite get me what I want. I just want to paint in what I want. You just quickly erase it right there and then go about whatever process you want. As a reminder, you can come back here. Let's just double check this, put it on subject only. You can come back here with a black mask and tap select subject. And that's what it will do because we have that option on. And then while the mask is running, give that one quick second. There we go. And while the mask is running, we can paint in only skin wherever we want and it's protected by the subject perimeter.